This question appeared on a video which explained how to copy data from multiple workbooks into one single worksheet. In that video, each of the source workbooks contained just one single worksheet each. And what this viewer wanted to know was how to do the same thing when the source workbooks contain multiple sheets. So that's what we'll go through in this video. To get set up, I've got an almost blank workbook. I've written some column headings into the top row of sheet one, and I've saved that as a macro enabled workbook in the same folder as a subfolder containing the files that we're going to import. Just to show you the set of files we're going to work with, I'll stick a link in the video description, by the way, so you can download these and have the same data to work with. So each file contains a list of films made in a particular year. But within each of the yearly workbooks, we've separated out the films into the months in which they were released. So each worksheet contains a different list of films based on the month of film release. Now, not every workbook has the exact same worksheets. Some have different months in them. And of course, each table each month contains a different list of films with different numbers of rows. And what we want to be able to do is get that table of data built up into a single continuous list in our main workbook. To get started with the code, I'd like to write a subroutine that will simply list out the file names of all the Excel files in the My Files folder. So let's head into the Visual Basic Editor, and then we can insert a new module into the project and create a subroutine called something like Get All Movies. The first thing I'll do in there is declare a variable to hold the movie file name, and that's going to be a string. And then to make sure that I don't have to construct the complete folder path to each movie file each time I want to reference one, I'm going to use the chdir or change directory statement to point to this workbook.path and then concatenate to that backslash my files and an extra backslash at the end there as well. What I can then do is use the dir function, the directory function, to try to return the name of the first file in that folder that has an xlsx extension. So I'm going to do that by saying movie file name equals dir and then open up some round brackets. Now, if I hadn't already changed the directory to this workbooks.path and the my files folder, I'd have to include that in the directory function as well. But because I've already done that part, I can simply refer to the type of file that I'm trying to capture a reference to, or return the file name of, I should say. So in some double quotes, I'm going to use a wildcard character, an asterisk, followed by dot xlsx, and then close the double quotes and close the round brackets. So at this point, what that will do is attempt to find the first file in the My Files folder that has an XLSX extension. And if I were to simply debug.print the movie file name, I should see when I execute this routine, I get Movies 2011, which is the first file in that folder. Now I'd just like to repeat that process for each of the other Excel files in the same folder. So to do that, I'm going to wrap up my debug.print statement in a do until loop. So I'm going to say do until movie file name equals an empty string. I'll just indent my debug.print statement. And once I've printed out the name of the first file, I'm going to try to find the next one by saying movie file name equals dir. So I'm not going to pass any values to any of the parameters of the directory function. And if we do that, it uses the same parameters we've used for the initial search, just moving on to the next file automatically. To close off my loop, I can write the loop keyword. And then if I run the subroutine again, we should find a list of all of the Excel files in the folder we're pointing to. Now, in order to get at the worksheets in each of the files, I'm going to open up each workbook in turn and then close it down before moving on to the next one. To help with that, I'm going to declare a variable called movie file, and that's going to hold a reference to a workbook object. Then inside my do until loop, after I've printed out the name of the file, I'm going to say set movie file equals workbooks.open and then pass in the movie file name. So again, without having changed the directory to this workbook.path and my files, I'd have to concatenate that part in the open method of the workbooks collection. But because I'm already pointing to the this workbook.path and my files folder, I don't need to do that here. 
before I move on to the next file, I want to make sure that I close down each of the movie workbooks. I don't want them all to be left open at the end of the process. So we'll do some useful stuff in between, of course. But at the end of the loop, we're going to say movie file dot close. And then just to quickly check that, we're going to run the subroutine and we should see a bunch of Excel files opening and closing in turn, one after the other, until we run out of Excel files in that folder. Next, I'd like to add the code that will loop through the worksheets collection once each movie file has been opened. So to do that again, I'm going to declare a variable. This one's going to hold a reference to a single worksheet. So I'm going to say dim ws as worksheet. And then after opening up the movie file, I'm going to say for each ws in, I'm going to make sure to reference the movie file first and then refer to the worksheets collection contained within it. I can then write the next WS line to close off that loop. And then just to begin with, I, I would like to debug.print the name of the worksheet. So let's say debug.print, and I'm going to add a tab space just so the layout in the immediate window will be a little more interesting. I'm going to say VB tab, and then concatenate that to the WS.name property. So having done that, if I run the subroutine again, we should see each of the workbooks opening and closing in turn. But for each of the workbooks we've opened, it lists out the monthly worksheets in that file. Next, I'd like to work out which range of cells we want to copy from each of the worksheets we're looping through. Just to help demonstrate that, I'm going to open up one of the existing files. Let's go for Movies 2011. And the technique I'm going to use, we could use several techniques here, but the technique I'm going to use is to refer to range A1 on each worksheet and then refer to the current region property of that range. And if I press Ctrl and A on the keyboard, that shows you what the current region represents. It's the entire block of cells to which cell A1 belongs. Now, of course, that includes the top row, the header row, and I don't want to include that in the range of cells I copy. So once I've referenced the current region, I'm going to move that entire selection down by one row. And then to make sure that I don't include the extra row at the bottom, I'm going to resize the selection to be one row less than the current size that it has. Now that little last bit is, is not absolutely necessary for this example, of course. Copying a blank row won't do any harm, but we have to consider what might have happened if, for example, somebody had added some aggregates to the end of our columns. Maybe we've added a, a sum to find the total runtime and then maybe an, an average as well. So if we've done things like that. The current region property will include those extra aggregates at the bottom. So just to be precise, to handle the possibility that somebody might have included extra information below the list of data, we'll resize our selection to make sure we only get the data rows. So having explained all that, let's actually write the code to do it. I'll close this workbook down without saving any changes. And then back in the Visual Basic Editor, I'll start by declaring a variable just to help me with this. I'm going to say dim source range as range. And then after I've printed out the name of the worksheet, let's add a new line of code that says set source range equals ws dot range a1 dot current region. What I'd then like to do is shift that region down by one row, and I can do that by saying source range dot offset one comma zero. So one row down, zero columns to the right. If I didn't care about the blank row at the bottom there, I could then just choose to copy that range. But if I wanted to resize it to be one row less in height than it currently is, I can apply the resize property to that and then set the row size to be equal to source range dot rows dot count minus one. I don't need to resize the column size. That's fine as it is. So at that point, I could close the round brackets and then apply the copy method to that block of cells. Now we need to work out where that data is going to be pasted to. And again, just to demonstrate that, I'm going to switch back to Excel. Now, if we already had some rows of data in sheet one on our main list, we could use a technique to go from cell A1 
end Excel down and then offset one row further down from there to find the next blank cell in the list. But of course, when we begin, we won't have any data in this list at all. So end Excel down, we'll find the very last cell in the worksheet. And if we try to, uh, to offset one row further down from there, it will fail because there are no, no more rows to find. So what we're going to do instead is go from the very bottom cell in column A, end Excel up, and then offset one row down from there, and we'll always find the next available blank cell at the end of the list. So to make that work, let's head back into the Visual Basic Editor. We could do the pasting in a couple of different ways. We could have a separate explicit statement that applies the paste special method to the cell we end up in. But we can take a brief shortcut actually. At the end of the copy method, if I type in a space, there's an optional destination parameter and that requires a reference to a range object. So I'm going to just break this across a couple of lines. I'm going to type in a space underscore and then head down to the next line and then set the destination of this copy to my worksheet in my movies workbook, my, my current workbook. So that's going to be sheet one dot range a 1,048,576 dot end Excel up and then dot offset one row down and zero columns to the right. Now, of course, if you're working in legacy workbooks, you can't guarantee you've got this exact number of rows in a worksheet. So rather than doing things that way, we have a couple of other choices. Rather than using the range property to refer to the cell, we could use the cells property instead. And in the cells property, we can refer to the row number and the column number of the cell we want to reference. So for the row number, I'd want to refer to the total number of rows belonging to the sheet one object. So I could say sheet one dot rows dot count. And in my case, that would return 1,048,576, followed by a comma and then set the column number to one, which is the same as column A. So that would be a little more robust. It would mean that it wouldn't matter how many rows were available on the worksheet you're working with. That will always reference the very last cell on in column A on that sheet. OK, at this point, I think we're ready to give everything a quick test. So let's just comment out the debug.print statements for the time being. And I'm just going to restore down my VB editor window so we can see what's going on in the background and then simply run the subroutine won't be particularly quick the first time with all the screen updates going on, but there we go. We've eventually ended up with our full list of all the films from all of the worksheets and all of the workbooks. So we can just check there that the, the dates look sensible. We have got everything from 2011 to 2016 from a variety of different months. So the core part of the system is working quite well. At this point, it's just adding a few bells and whistles to tidy the whole thing up. So let's make sure that if we wanted to run this multiple times, we clear the contents of sheet one in our main workbook. So to do that, I'm going to add a new line of code to the top, uh, just after my table of, uh, sorry, my list of variables. Let's say something like sheet one dot range, a one dot current region dot offset one comma zero dot clear. So that will clear the contents and the formats of any cells in the entire region, starting one row below the column headings. To make sure that we don't see the screen flashing or flickering as we run our subroutine, we can disable the screen updating property. So let's add a new line which says application dot screen updating equals false. We'll do that at the beginning. And then we can reverse that at the end of the procedure. After we finish looping, we can say application dot screen updating equals true. After we've finished with a single workbook, um, if you've copied a large volume of data, occasionally when you close the workbook down, it asks you, would you like to keep that data in the clipboard? One way to avoid that before we close down the workbook is to set the cut copy mode to false. So I'm going to say application dot cut copy mode equals false. You just have to ignore the list of options which appears there by pressing escape. So that will prevent that message from popping up. Uh, at the end, once I've um, finished looping and dropped all the data in sheet one, it might be nice to have all the columns the correct width on sheet one as well. So let's say sheet one dot range a one dot current region 
dot entire column dot auto fit and that will make sure that all the columns are the correct width. So at that point, let's just give the whole thing another quick test. If I restore down the VB editor window again and then run the subroutine one more time, we should see a lot less screen flickering this time. And the end result looks a little bit neater as well. We've got our full list of films, but all the columns are the correct width to read all of the data. Just before we finish, I'd like to mention an alternative technique we can use to transfer data between cells without needing to rely on copy and paste. And the reason I bring this up is because another viewer mentioned this technique recently on another video and quite rightly pointed out that copy and paste is not necessarily the quickest, most efficient way to transfer data between cells in Excel. So just to demonstrate this, I'm going to modify the way my code works. I'm going to maximize the VB editor window first, and I'm going to declare another variable, which is going to be called something like target range or destination range. So dim target range as range. Now, I've covered this technique briefly in another video recently. So if you want the details of this, I'll uh, point out which video that is shortly. Um, so source range and target range. Then I'm going to head down into my for each loop, which is looping through the worksheets collection. And I'm going to modify the code which copies from the source range. So let's just split these lines up a little bit. I'm going to take away the copy method and the space underscore at the end of that line. That will cause a syntax error, but don't worry, we'll fix that in a moment. And then I'm going to set my source range, if I can spell that correctly equal to source range offset one resize. So we're referring to the same block of cells there as we were before. We're just not applying the copy method to that block. What I'd then like to do is set my target range. So on this line, which is currently highlighted in red with a syntax error, I'm going to say set target range equals. And the important thing here is that the target range doesn't just refer to one single cell. It's a slightly awkward thing about this technique. With copy and paste, you simply need to reference the top left-hand corner where you'd like your data to be pasted to. With this technique, we need to set our target range to match the dimensions of our source range. So sheet one dot cells end Excel up offset one. And then I want to resize that to have the same number of rows and columns as my source range. So I'm going to apply the resize property to that and then open up some round brackets and I'll take this down to the next line with a space underscore and the row size is going to be equal to the source range dot rows dot count and the column size is going to be equal to source range dot columns dot count. I'll spell columns correctly eventually as well. There we go. And then I can close the parentheses at the end of that line. And then the final part of the system, I'm going to assign the source range to the target range. And I'm going to do that by saying target range dot value equals source range dot value. So that's the entire technique. I'm just going to resize the VB editor window again. And then of course, don't forget, we're gonna be clearing out the contents of this worksheet each time. So if I now run this one, the end result will be exactly the same. It's just that the technique can potentially work quicker than copy and paste. One small downside to that technique is that when you transfer the value from the source range to the value of the target range, that wouldn't bring across any of the formatting of the cells. So it wouldn't bring back the background color or the font formatting. So that's one small downside. But apart from that, you may find better performance using that technique than using copy and paste. So there we go. That's how we loop through multiple worksheets in multiple workbooks to copy their contents into a single list. I think that answers the original question fairly comprehensively. So uh, if not, please do feel free to ask more questions. As always, I'll do my best to get them answered. Otherwise, thanks for watching. See you next time.